Hey everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Something every new app needs when it starts up is an onboarding experience. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at how to use some simple UI kit controls to give your app a really nice onboarding experience. So if this is something you think you need to do, come on in and we'll take a look and see how this can be done. Okay, first let's quickly just go over what this onboarding app can do. So what we have here in our app for our onboarding experience is something that's swipeable. We can swipe through these view controllers and notice how when we do, this little page control at the bottom also updates. We can also tap on this page control and it will jump at most one at a time, backwards or forwards. We've also got some buttons here that we can hit where if we want to skip through the whole onboarding experience and just go to our login page, we can do that. And of course, if we want to hit next, we can also manually tap through by hitting the next button before we wrap around back to the beginning of our onboarding experience. So that's the demo of the onboarding experience. If you want to just jump in and check out the repo, feel free to go on to the link in the show notes or you can find it here. But if you want to understand a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes, stick with me and we'll dive into how the UI page view controller actually works. All right, so how do we set these things up? Well, the first thing we can do in this simple example is I'm just going to show you what it looks like to set up a simple UI page view controller with just three view controllers, a red, a green, and a blue. And then we'll take a look at the more complex example after. But the way you start is you basically just define a view controller and extend the UI page view controller. This is the thing that gives you all the functionality to do the swipes, the back and forth, and this is the main control we want to use. Now note this little dot here at the bottom, this little, you see this, this is called the UI page control. This is separate from the underlying view controls here. So this is a separate control I'm adding to my page. And the, basically the way you set these things up is you just create an array to hold the controllers you'd like to have as part of your onboarding experience. You add your view controllers to the array and then you pass in or you set the view controller you currently like display through this method here, set view controllers. So in this case, if my initial page is zero, I'm gonna pass it my very first view controller, this red one, in an array, which is itself kind of confusing, but this is just kind of how it does this. So no, we're not passing in all the view controllers here. We're just passing in one in an array, the very first one we like to display. And that's kind of it. That's how we set it up. And then as we swipe back and forth, we have to tell it what view controller to display next. And the way we do that is with the data source. So we extend or implement the UI page view controller data source protocol. And in here, it is gonna ask us, what view controller would you like to see next if the one before was this one? Or if the view controller after this one is here, you know, what view controller would you like me to display next? And this is logic we have to implement. So in the case of before, it's saying, hey, the view controller before the swipe was this one. Which one do you want me to display next? We basically go into our array, find the view controller currently being displayed, and we get that index. So now we know what's currently being displayed. Then we just need to write the logic to decide what to do next. If we're at the very last page in our array, we can, in this case, wrap and just go back to the very first one, or we can simply say, you know what, I just want to display the previous page, so just take my current index minus one and then return that view controller, that would be a swipe going to the left. Or if we're going the other way, view controller after, we do the exact same thing, we get our current index, and then we decide, hey, if we're not at the end of our array, let's just display the next one, take our current index plus one and swipe this way. Or if we are in fact at the very end, just wrap around and go to the first. So this is the communication back that the UI page controller use. You have to tell it what view controller to display next. And the way we can keep this UI controller at the bottom in sync is through the UI page view controller delegate. So don't be confused by that. There's the data source, which is asking us what to display next, but the delegate is it's actually telling us, hey, I just finished animating something. If you're curious on what my current state is, you can ask me. So here we can get the view controllers. 
we can get the current index. And once we know what the current index is that's currently displayed here, we can then update our page control with that current index. That's how this thing at the bottom, you see how these dots change? That's how that stays in sync as we swipe left and right. So that in a nutshell is how the UI page view controller works. Let's now take a look and jump in and see what a more complex example would look like. Okay, if you've downloaded the source code at home, the way I'm going to flip to the more complex example is I'm going to go into my app delegate. Of course, we're not using any storyboards here. And I'm just going to comment out the simple view controller example here and comment in this demo view controller. So if you do that and go command R, this will run the more complex example. And let's go and see how this one actually works. Okay, the first thing I want to over communicate and explain something that was really confusing for me when I first got into this control is understanding that these buttons you see here, skip, next, and that page view control, those are actually separate than the underlying view controls that we're passing to our UI page view controller as part of that ongoing experience. So when we're swiping here, it's moving through these different view controllers, but these controls up here are separate. We have to lay those out in our parent view controller, and this is just simply an underlying view controller that we display as we're swiping. So that's the first thing to understand. But once you understand that, it's not too bad. We basically just build it like any other app. We hook up actions for these skip and next buttons. We need to know how to programmatically uh, jump through here as we do it. So let's, let's go through and just see what this would actually look like in code and how we would actually set this up. So now I'm going to flip to the demo view controller. And this is just like our simple view controller in that we have a very you know, simple, um, we're going to extend our UI page view controller here. And we're doing the exact same thing we did before. We're going to create some pages. But now here's the external controls that we are you know, setting up. And maybe I'll even mark that up with external controls. So here we're going to just define our skip next page control button. Uh, stick around to the end. These are some cool little animations that we're going to add where basically when we get to the end, did you see how those things uh, animated off? That's what those constraints are doing here. And then we're basically just going in here, setting ourselves up as the data source and the delegate, adding a target to the page control here at the bottom. So this is basically us making this tappable so we can react to these changes. And then here we're basically just defining the three view controllers that we've got. So here I've created a simple plain old onboarding view controller, which has a image, a title and a subtitle. That's what you see on these things here. And then basically just by passing in some text, I can reuse this code and reuse this layout multiple times and I don't have to create it over and over again. That's, what's, that's all that's going on with this onboarding here. So I've got a couple pages, and then I have a special different login view controller at the very end. This is the one you see down here. But note, this login page view controller doesn't contain a skip, next, or a page view controller. All it's got here is these three fields and this, these two fields and this button. So that's just the main thing to understand. That's just a plain view controller. And then once we've got all those defined, this is our struct that we're gonna keep track of what's currently being displayed. So we're always gonna come back to this array with an index and ask it for what should currently be displayed. And then the majority of your time in terms of building these onboarding experience is just figuring out what view to display next. So we start off by just setting in our set view controllers the very first page we want to display. So in this case, that's going to be initial page zero. The very first element of our array is this one here, page one. And then basically, we've already registered ourselves as the data source. So when we swipe, the page controller is going to ask us in here whether we're swiping forward or back, which view controller we'd like to display next. That's what's going on with these methods. And then to help deal with the skip and the next, I've actually created a couple of extensions on the UI page view controller itself to programmatically go to the next page, go to the previous page, which I'm actually not using this demo, but I just wanted to include it there anyways in case I do need it, and then go to a specific page. And if you look in here, all you'll see that we're doing is we're calling that same set view controller method passing in the page that we want 
And we know what page we want by just figuring out what's currently displayed, getting the index, and then pulling that index out of our array. And that's how we know what to go to next or previous. So in the case of our skip button, let's just go take a look and see how that was set up. Where is our skip button? So here's our skip button. We've styled it and set it up for auto layout and we position and do everything here. Here's where we add the selector, skip tapped. And if we see what happens when skip tapped, this is the case where we actually wanna to jump to the final login page of our onboarding experience. We wanna bypass everything and just skip to the end. So when we tap that, what we really want to do is figure out what's the index for this login page here, the very fine one, final one, and we want to display it. So that's what we do. We basically calculate the last page index, which is going to be the number of pages we have minus one. And then we basically update our page control to that last page. That's why when we go skip, you'll see that well, actually, our, our UI control actually goes off the page. You can't see it here, but we're keeping it in sync anyways. And then we jump to a specific page, passing in that last index. So when we go jump, that's just going to take, it's just going to use that set view controller, pass in the index for our last page, which for us was going to be three. And that's how it displays this login page. Next is something very similar. If we go take a look at how next is set up, Where's next? Here we go. <clears throat> it's got the next tapped here. If we go take a look at next, here we just want to go to the next element in our page view. First, we're just going to update our page control current page. We're just going to go plus one. That's how that gets incremented. Then we're going to go to the next page. And how do we know what the next page is? Well, we just look up our current page. We get the next page by actually calling page view controller on the data source itself and basically calling this after and basically saying what view should come after. So this is really cool. We're actually using the data source here to ask it what view after should appear. And that's actually gonna get us our next page because we're actually calling back to ourselves here because we are the data source. That's kind of cool. And then once we know what the next page is, we simply display it again by calling set view controllers. And we could do the same thing with go to previous here. We can call our data source view controller, which ironically is ourselves, only this time we want to go to before and it will return us the previous page before where we currently are. And that's how we can display that here. So that in a nutshell is how these things are hooked up. That's how our UI controller updates itself. We can go to specific pages. Next, let's take a look and I want to show you this really cool animation that makes these things actually disappear. <music> Okay, the way this animation works is we're actually changing constraints. What we do is we grab the constraint for the skip, next, and page view control auto layout constraint here. We then note that when we animate out, we want to change the values of those. And we just put those in an animation block so that they kind of come out and come in depending upon whether or not we're in this last page. So let's just slowly walk through and see the mechanics behind how that works. So first we're gonna define three vars, one to keep track of each one of these constraints that we want to animate out. In this case, we've got the page control bottom constraint, which will be this one here, skip and next top anchors, which are these ones up here. We're just defining variables. We're gonna grab those later on. And when we do the layout, we do grab them like this. So we don't include them in our NS layouts constraint activate block. Here we need to activate these ones manually ourselves. So what we're basically doing is we're just defining the constraint in the case of the page bottom view controller. We're just going, hey, view bottom anchor, I like a constraint equal to system spacing below the page view controller here. That's what's defining this with a multiplier of two. Remember two means uh, 16. Each multiplier is eight points. This is just the syntax that the auto layout uh, language uses here. And once we've got those constraints for our skip, next, and page control, like we've got those. So we physically have our hands on them and we can do things to those constraints when we want to. And all the magic happens down here in this animate controls if needed function. So basically this method is called when we want to 
either someone clicks up here, if they click to the last page, basically we want to animate out, or animate controls is also called every time our page controller is tapped, when skip is tapped, or next is tapped. So this function we're defining here, animate controls if needed, it's going to be smart enough to basically look and see, are we on the last page? If we are on the last page, go ahead and hide those controls, otherwise show them. And then it basically just calls this method here, UI view property animator, and calls layout if needed. This is a really neat way of doing animation using auto layout constraints. By calling layout if needed, what we're basically saying is, hey, I've changed some constraints of what you see on the screen. I'd like you to lay yourself out again. That's what's going on with this call here. And the reason why it animates is because we put it inside this running animation block using the UI view property animator. So if we go look at what hide controls does, it's, it's really nothing magical right here. All we do as we go forward and back is when we hide controls, we take each one of those constraints, each one of those constraints, change the constant to be something big like minus 80, and that just moves them out of there. So they're still there on screen. We've just changed the constant, animated them out, and then when they come back in, we just change it back to what they were before, that multiplier of 2 or 16, and that's what brings them in. So the fact that we basically check and see if we're on the last page, hide or show, and then animate in this animator block. And that's how it's done. To go through the walk through this demo, you can go to the Swift Arcade, scroll down to design, and you'll see an onboarding link there where you can see basically what we just walked through. I try to give some kind of a textual description and picture of how things work. And if you wanna see the code, simply go to this simple onboarding and you'll see a simple onboarding demo there. If you download the repo, you'll have the entire project and you can see how all this works yourself. Okay, well, there you have it. A simple onboarding experience. Lots of apps need these. This is a really simple, easy way to get one going. I, I know I went a little bit quickly through this one. If you have any questions, just drop them below. Uh, do check out the source code. And if you like the material, do hit like and subscribe. And I hope you found that valuable. Okay, thanks so much for coming, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.